Thanks for joining this uh, broadcast this afternoon, and it's certainly uh, my pleasure to be here with Stephanie Rosick in uh, the uh, City of Kitchener Rotunda Centre. And um, this uh, uh, chance for us to, to talk about Year of Code for Waterloo Region is really um, actually also coordinating the, the kickoff of a new element of blogging uh, that I've been trying. Um, I've always thought there needed to be more emphasis put on the idea of actually creating conversations and kicking the tires on ideas and so on. So one of my personal uh, next, next steps for me this year was to try and actually document uh, some of these additional conversations. And so I'm going to start a, a virtual coffee shop uh, subcategory on, on my blog and, and uh, share some of that out. So it's uh, awesome for me to be here with Stephanie this afternoon and we're going to do this uh, first virtual coffee shop session uh, so that you have a chance to learn a little bit more about Year of Code in Waterloo Region. So welcome Stephanie, thank you for being here. Thank you. We, so, we forgot the coffee. We forgot the coffee. <laughs> we did that earlier. It's virtual. <laughs> it's virtual, yes. <laughs> virtual coffee. So perhaps you can uh, share with us a little bit about the year of code and how you got started and yeah um, absolutely and, yeah so it is now September 18th and almost a year ago I had a chat with um, Ian Klugman who's the CEO of Communitech and he kind of said I love what you're doing teaching kids about code and techno te technological literacy and wouldn't it be great to do something big and huge and crazy and uh, awesome. so, so some of us got together and put our brains together and came up with this idea, which is Year of Code Waterloo Region. Um, we were going to start it in January. We decided to wait till July, so we had a bit more time to plan. And so basically from this past July 1st until next June 30th, we are running a year-long campaign trying to promote digital literacy to as many people in the region as possible. So if you're a kid, maybe we'll try to teach you to code. If you are a senior, maybe we'll teach you to, um, to use your smartphone so you can communicate with your family. Um, wherever you're at in your, your personal life and, and career, we want to help you learn a little bit more than you know right now, make your life a little better. Great. That's awesome. So you mentioned uh, certainly a focus on, on students, um, young, young people in our uh, KW, Cambridge, Waterloo Region community. Mm -hmm. um, so from the perspective of, of your team, um, what is it that you see as really important about coding for students to learn? Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to throw out is that it doesn't have to be coding. Um, coding is certainly really popular right now and we're calling it Year of Code because well, it's catchy and, and everyone is very interested in coding. But I would argue that not everybody has to learn how to code, but it is imperative that we all understand the technology that surrounds us. Um, you know, we're sitting in the city of Kitchener City Hall and there's you know, free public Wi-Fi. We both have a smartphone. You've got a bag full of ridiculous amounts of technology. <laughs> and this technology is not going away in our daily lives. So I think the most important thing is to make people feel comfortable with technology, demystify it a little bit, get people away from feeling scared about it. Um, and then if you want to go a little bit further, if you want to learn how to code, absolutely, because those are skills that, you know, there's lots of careers in them going forward. So if kids do want to follow that path and learn, I think that's fantastic. But that's, that's you know, much, much higher than everybody needs. Okay, well that's a great perspective. Um, so perhaps you can share uh, a couple of highlights um, that you've accomplished mm -hmm. so far since your launch there in July. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're actually, for those of you who might be watching the live stream, we're, we're sitting on the back side of the Kitchener City Hall Rotunda and you were here on July 4th mm -hmm. when we launched the campaign formally. So we, we filled the space with um, over 1,300 people coming in over the course of an afternoon and playing with various pieces of technology. So we had, um, there's, there's a group in town that, that has built this huge big robot and it was throwing a ball around and, and kids were playing and interacting with that. We taught kids to code. We had some of the, um, the maker spaces there. So there's a new one out of Cambridge called Kinetic Maker Labs. Um, Gareth Carr was there and doing absolutely amazing things. Um, so just a, a big play um, area. Uh, so that was definitely the, the noisiest thing we did this summer. And then following, we, we were at a number of festivals and events. Um, we ran some programming at the museum just down the street here for kids to come in and, and do a drop-in, you know, play with little bits, which are pieces that you, you uh, plug together, little electronic pieces, and you can, you can make circuits and you can make flashy lights do things and you can attach sensors and make fans spin. 
um, as well as drop-in stuff for adults. So um, one, one of the nicest things I, I liked is we taught a woman who I'm guessing was 75 to, uh, to, to what, what was the smartphone. She came in, she said, I just, I want to know what a smartphone is, I have no idea. Um, June McDonald, who is our marketing manager, showed her her Android phone and the woman left with like the biggest smile on her face. It was fantastic because she got it and she didn't feel um, scared of the technology. You know, she's like, I'm going to go investigate this now. So That's we're, we're giving information to as many people as we can. And confidence is such a big piece of yeah. moving forward as, oh, a, as a person. Isn't yeah, it? It, it's, it's like, you know, driving your car. Um, do you know enough about your car that you can trust your mechanic? Yeah, great analogy. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, well, I certainly enjoyed being here at that event, and I, mm -hmm. I remember shooting some uh, video footage of, of the robot that you referenced and, yeah. and seeing the excitement in the kids, um, of, you know, asking yeah. questions about how it worked and interacting yeah. with it, and it really uh, sort of showed a very dynamic opportunity yeah. uh, for the yeah. students, to, students to learn. Yeah, and, so. and I think it's really important. Um, we are trying to make this learning and, and, and expanding digital literacy to everybody in the region, but we are very much focusing on kids and youth because if you are going to change the world, you're going to do a lot more of that by starting with people who are younger, you know, the people that are going to build tomorrow. Right, and I love that you mentioned change the world, CTW, my favorite hashtag. Oh, is it? <laughs> I'm all about Perfect. that. Perfect, okay. So perhaps maybe thinking in terms of a classroom perspective, um, do you have some recommendations around some easy starting points, perhaps thinking of uh, junior students, intermediate students, high school students. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've just gone back to school. Obviously, everybody around the world has gone back to school. Well, not around the world, but at least in Canada. Um, and so we're working on a number of resources on our website right now. So people can go to yocwr.ca, which is the Yorkcote Waterloo region. Um, and we're going to be building that up over the month. Um, we have a kids resource page now that people can go take a look and, and okay. have a few things there. We're working on building some um, toolkits for mm -hmm. teachers or parents to, to download and just takes them through some directions. Um, so those aren't there yet, but you know, hopefully by the time someone is watching this, this video in a few weeks, then we'll have some of those resources up for people. And um, just send us an email, I think is the best, because we're really looking to engage with the schools and the teachers and the students, and we want to know what people are interested in learning. Right. So they can Great. just um, contact us through the website and, and do that. I love that last comment about people can express what they're interested in learning. I, oh, yeah. So much in, in both uh, uh, seeing students in the school system, but also thinking of professional learning opportunities mm -hmm. for staff. That ability to chase what you're interested in, chase, mm -hmm. you know, learn about what you're passionate about, plays such a vital role in Oh, yeah. in anybody being interested in learning moving forward. So it's great that you have that. And, and it uh, changes it changes so often too, right? So we've, you've got to be responsive to what's changing. And there are so many new tools out there. Uh, there's lots I find out every week, new tools. And oh, well, that one's actually really cool. Let's start incorporating that into the learning. So. Well, the, the rate at which new tools are born is amazing. I was just reading some yeah. uh, statistics this summer, actually. Um, and some of the latest studies estimate that over 100,000 new websites come online daily. Oh my God. And so, I mean, some <laughs> yeah. of them, of course, are, are content driven, but there are, are new, new tools all the time. Yeah, and that's so, impressive. Uh, it is. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah. So, do you have any um, uh, suggestions around what equipment uh, might be involved? I know from a teacher perspective, um, you know, they'll be conscious of, of uh, classroom budgets and, you know, maybe yeah. some ideas that you can share around entry level. Absolutely. So I think the best thing, I mean, the, the ideal would be to have um, some sort of a computer and an internet connection that will give you the most access. Mm -hmm. A lot of the tools, um, like Scratch is what we use heavily, which is um, an interactive programming language for kids. They just drag and drop. They don't have to understand the programming syntax, but they can build a program that makes a character do something. So that's all online and it's free. So there's lots of tools like that. So if you can get a computer with a basic internet connection, you know, the, the world is your oyster. Um, if you have a tablet or a phone or something, you've got some more op options there. Um, it's going to be a little bit more limited, but there are tools out there. Um, there are even things if you're not connected digitally, if you don't have the technology or you don't have the money for it, you can do offline sorts of learning. Um, there's, a, there's a great game called Ro Robot Turtles um, mm, okay. that they sell up at Mastermind Toys here and online and stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's a board game and you have to move a character around and, um, and teach it to do different things. 
and um, I wonder if the, the, the bell is telling us it's quarter to four. <laughs> it might. <laughs> it's getting enough. Um, so you, you, you program your little person on the board game to move around. So you're, right. you're, you're learning the algorithmic thinking behind programming while not actually using a computer. And there's all sorts of offline activities that you can find to use. Great. Yeah. Well, those are all good yeah. suggestions and certainly thinking of um, the Waterloo Region District School Board, mm -hmm. we have a blend of uh, desktops and iPads and Chromebooks in all of our schools yeah. and so there's a whole variety of uh, options for teachers to and explore I think, there. I think that's really important to note that, you know, we're not moving into this um, world where, you know, everything is all the same, everybody has the same kind of computer work. There's a lot more of, you know, bring your own device to school or to work. So I think if you've got a, a range of things for kids to play with, that's so helpful. Absolutely. It lets them think in different ways, it lets them, you know, put different components together. Um, yeah, you've got to be able to, to think creatively on the fly. And that's actually, you mentioned two key elements that uh, certainly from an IT planning perspective um, mm -hmm. we've been talking about. I mean, once things are on the web, web-centric, mm -hmm. that's such an important notion, um, but then you've got the ability to access your code, in this case, or mm -hmm. you know, your you know game, whatever, yeah. um, from anywhere. And, yeah. you know, back and forth, doesn't matter about yeah. location so yeah. much. And so However, that's powerful. I, I would I would say that if you have an offline way of doing something, it's always good to have the offline thing available before you teach a class or a something, because inevitably the tech will break. <laughs> and that's something else that's important to learn. Um, you know, how, what do you do if, if your Wi-Fi goes down? What do you do if... Um, if MIT's Scratch server goes down, which happened to me a couple weeks ago, junior achievement, you, you, you just uh, roll with it. <laughs> you're right. You, you yeah. have to have sort of a back yeah. pocket plan, and it is yeah. good to point that out as reliable as technology is. Yeah. There certainly are times when things go wrong. It's so. not a fail safe. Um, there's no. humans behind it. You know, we're not perfect. <laughs> no, apparently not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, maybe uh, you've highlighted a lot of resources. Maybe this is a good time just to sort of replug the website uh, yeah, address totally. where, where peak teachers can go and, and view the, board, the resources that are already online. Awesome. So I'm going to have us edit the video later so that we have it stro scrolling across the bottom here. But YOC, YOCWR.ca is the website. We've got our blog, we've got some learning resources. We're going to be building it over the entire year, so check back for more updates. Sign up for our email newsletter and you'll find out events that are coming up too. Great. I, actually, if I can plug a couple of events, we've got sure. Digital Drawing for Girls um, is continuing this Monday. There's three more sessions at Kitchener Public Library. Um, we're doing a Women, Wine and Code in Waterloo on Monday. We're doing a talk for uh, the Impact Theatre Festival wow. on Monday. Monday's a busy day around here. Absolutely, so, but so many yeah. exciting events. Oh, it's great. Uh, it's fantastic. For the people in our community. Yeah. Yeah, it's really Oh, it's that's really great. Good. Well, certainly so, listening to you describe all of these activities has made me think of uh, perhaps sharing something from our, our summer computer camp, Cats and Camp, as yeah, we call it. Yeah. Uh, we had some, some teachers learning to uh, program using a language tickle. Okay. And yeah. they were using it on iPads. But the, the actual language um, was being used to control one of the spiral balls. And okay. I was quite fascinated to see... Um, just the learning, the exploring, the problem solving, mm -hmm. seeing collaborative problem solving as people were designing routes and yeah. they were trying to control the yeah. spiral ball. Yeah. And it was just such fascinating learning. And then yeah. at the end, we sort of kicked it up a notch, and, and uh, one gentleman was controlling the spiral ball with mm -hmm. one of the Mayo armbands. And so we yeah. had that much working, and uh, all I could think of was extrapolating that back to a classroom yeah. environment oh, yeah. where oh, yeah. it, it would be groups of students planning, problem solving, testing, mm -hmm. reflecting on the results, taking oh, yeah. the next step. Yeah. Uh, all of that is such deep and, and rich learning opportunity. It's, yeah. it's really a wonderful, yeah. wonderful approach. I don't know if you've seen them, but um, someone's come out with bracelets and they're beads or something that you can code and then they send messages between them. Oh, um, yeah. So, so somebody was talking about, well, maybe Morse code is going to come back and this is going to be the way that kids in 2015, you know, send notes in class. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> Which, you know what, if they're going to learn Morse code and learn how to program this stuff, then I'm all for it. <laughs> Well, of course, I'll have to ask, you know me well enough, do the mm. beads come in black? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll make them just for you. <laughs> we'll order special. Special order. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any uh, final comments you wanted to uh, share with our listeners today? Um, no, but that just sounds like a very excited child out there. Um, yes. I would say, you know, thanks for watching. We're really looking forward to what we can do over the next eight months um, and, and beyond. Um, so if people have things they want to learn, questions, please drop us a line. 
hello at yocwr.ca. Okay, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining me here today. This is mm -hmm. uh, such an interesting topic, and I was thrilled that you would yeah. uh, be part of uh, yeah. the first virtual coffee shop That's event. Fantastic. So thank and you. I, I look forward to seeing more of them. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, okay, and uh, thanks to our, our viewers, and uh, we look forward to staying in touch. So thanks for joining our broadcast.